Hello everybody. This is Banished. This is one of the games I've played the most over the last few years. It's number eight on my list of Steam games by Playtime, clocking in at 282 hours so far and probably climbing to seventh place just from making this video to surpass Kerbal Space Program. So first briefly, what is Banished and what kind of video is this? Banished is a survival city builder. It's an indie game developed and self-published by a single person under the name Shining Rock Software. Survival is kind of vague, but it's a popular genre. Some might call it impoverished because it's filled with games that are incomplete. No Man's Sky is a, a recent example that I, I haven't even bothered to touch. So uh, Banished is definitely not one of those. Banished is pretty unambitious and uh, simple and done. To me, uh, Banished represents something like a, a game developer's fantasy in that it's, it's well-contained, it's self-consistent, it's, it's satisfying, and it's totally, you know, finished. And it's uh, just kind of a, a tranquil experience to play it, you, despite being uh, somewhat survival-y. It's a real-time strategy game that isn't very much like a real-time strategy game. There's no tense music or, or violence, and there's relatively little time pressure. It's uh, low actions per minute. It really reminds me of early SimCity games and its simplicity and creativity. It's a little bit like SimCity 3000, I guess. Banished takes place in a simpler time, one of living off the land, bartering for things, and being named Har Harlinit. This video is a review of sorts, just to explain what Banished is and why you should play it. But I'm being careful not to spoil anything, because for me, the joy and challenge of the game comes from, uh, from failure, from experimentation, and from building what you want and uh, seeing how it works. So I could give you a bunch of tips about build order and city layout, and I will, but not in this video. So if you want that sort of thing, go ahead and watch my next Banished video. But you can safely watch the rest of this video if you want to remain a purist, which I you know, fully encourage and support. Uh, Banished is simple enough and uncluttered enough that you can reasonably figure out everything yourself. I think Minecraft set a somewhat dangerous precedent in that regard because it became mega successful long before you could reasonably play the game well without the wiki. Because uh, you just couldn't figure out what to do or how to, how to build things. And as a result, uh, games that emulate it tend to be a bit lazy about teaching the player how to play the game itself, which admittedly is an art unto itself to do that right. Uh, and players of those games are forever cursed to ask themselves at every turn, am I struggling because I don't know something that I can't even reasonably be expected to figure out without looking outside the game for information? Survival games are, are probably the worst in that regard. Banished is low maintenance. This is something you might not think about much, but let's say you're tired or maybe you're just waking up or maybe you should have already gone to bed. Maybe you're slightly drunk. Maybe you're listening to a podcast. Unless you're an extremely chill person, you probably won't main Banished. You're going to play other games, and if not, you're super weird, and I'd love to hear from you about that. But if you're like me, it's awesome to have a game that's not super demanding, that you can use to unwind or just chill if you're not feeling all that up to it. It has a decent, calming soundtrack, lovely pastoral scenery, and not too much busy work. Uh, you just assign people jobs, and they figure out the minutia of exactly what to do most of the time. However, you are going to have to do a bit of hard work to achieve that tranquility. The fact that it's a survival game means people may die. In fact, if you just jump into the game for the first time, prepare uh, to build a few tiny settlements and watch them starve to death. Eventually, you'll definitely figure out how to get your colony established on the hardest difficulty without anyone dying. It's really just a matter of building the right structures at the right time and, and balancing your resources and your workers. So. You'll spend most of your time playing Banished, just kind of keeping an eye on things, making sure uh, that things don't get out of balance. The next challenge is, how do you grow your city? Uh, that will rely at least somewhat on how your people and resources are distributed. That's not too, not too super difficult to figure out, um, but you know, some strategies are better than others, definitely. Banished is a, a pretty casual game, and, and it's a very nice game, but you can definitely get punished for making big mistakes. There are tornadoes that might destroy part of your town, and you may have to scramble a bit to keep that from destabilizing that balance of people and resources. Disease might spread and kill off part of your population, but that's a late game problem and not too hard to cure. Uh, you might lay out your city wrong, and people might freeze to death on long walks in the dead of winter. Uh, I've definitely had that happen. Or you may just run out of something that starts a chain reaction of starvation. Uh, it doesn't happen a lot, but uh, it's definitely possible to create a death spiral of inefficiency uh, that wipes out your moderately large town, or at least part of it. Learning curve is a bit steep 
up front and certain people love that, but they get really disappointed in the mid game where there's relatively little challenge. But Banish has mods. Nearly all the popular mods seem to be trying to do one of two things. They're either adding a new building model to the game, which is just kind of a nice thing, or make the game easier. They make the resources easier to get, or they make the buildings cheaper or smaller, or make them do more than one thing. So you don't even have to face the mild challenge of figuring out which one is the best to build when and where. But maybe we could fix that. I've never really modded a game before, but I might be persuaded to give it a go uh, in this case. Because I think it would be comparatively easy to make, and it could really improve the, the game enough to be worth it for me. So bear with me while I pitch this to you. So here's what happens in the game as is. As your town grows, there eventually comes a day when you're pretty well established, you have like a, a town center, and a new thing happens. Uh, a whole convoy of nomadic people shows up, they don't have the basic supplies with them that you start your own colony with, there's no wagon train, they're uneducated, um, they got nothing. And uh, they just march up to your town center and politely ask to become residents of your town. And if you don't want them, you can just say no and they will politely single file their way off into the sunset, never to return. So you can get a quick boost to your population this way if you want, or otherwise it's no harm, no foul. Nothing changes and there'll be more nomads later, no problem. In terms of narrative, that makes almost no sense. Uh, the amount of time it takes the nomads to walk all the way from the edge of the map and then all the way back again is probably long enough for them to freeze to death if it's winter and probably long enough to doom them to death by starvation uh, assuming there isn't a soup kitchen directly adjacent to your little patch of wilderness uh, they have every reason to stay and you don't really have a narrative way to keep them out or make them leave they have you got no walls you have no weapons and they're in desperate need of food and shelter. So wouldn't it make more sense and be more challenging if you just simply couldn't say no? That way you would have incentive to build larger stockpiles of food and clothing, keep the materials on hand to construct housing quickly, or at least require you to have a boarding house uh, for new arrivals. So it would mean potentially uh, more shortages, uh, more chance of disease currently the hardest combination of settings mostly affects the starting conditions, which isn't very balanced. If you know the right way to handle it, and I can tell you the right way to handle it, uh, that difference kind of goes away and the game becomes relatively easy again um, pretty quickly. So that's my pitch. Uh, please let me know your thoughts in the comments if you try Vanished or if you already play and you have thoughts about how well that mod might work. Uh, I'm planning two more videos uh, about Banished, and the next one is sort of banished strategies, how to play. I don't want to rob you of, uh, you know, whatever experience you want, so I'm saving all my tips and tricks for that one. I'll try to do things mostly in order in that video, so you can watch that if you get stumped. Um, or maybe you're just trying to play a more optimized control game, increase the difficulty, you might find some of those tips helpful. So. I'll start with my early game build order, which is how I got the town that you see before you. So if you have too much trouble at the very beginning, just watch that part and uh, that, that should solve the issue for you. And then I'll, I'll continue on and talk a little bit about how to get growth, uh, you know, exp expanding this city from its sort of uh, uh, first atomic state. Stay tuned for that. And then uh, following that, I'll be taking this town even further and trying to go for a perfect game, get all the achievements, uh, get the 10 big achievements with just one playthrough. So we'll see if I'm able to do that. Uh, thank you for watching.